I know, but I'm gonna mess around with it. It looks expensive. <laughs> okay, so, um, Eval, nice job on the quiz. Okay, uh, for everybody else, what I've got here, <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me, I can get to cranky place way fast these days. You may not even see it coming. Be careful, son. Okay, um, what I have right here are the current grades for everybody in the room. I went through and anything that was missing became excused. And even with that, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people with a failing grade. The reason for the failing grade right now is the quiz. Right? That's that quiz. So I want to make sure that we are all on the same page here. How do you improve upon the quiz grade? Correction. The corrections. Now, I want to be super clear with the corrections, because if Jeanette turns in the corrections and they're done the wrong way, Jeanette, I'm not going to give you the credit. You need to redo any problem that you got wrong, even just a little bit. Like that first section where it says, like, it's all parent functions, and if you just are like, oh, whatever, if I gave you like half credit, I need you to redo it. Like limit doesn't exist. There were four reasons why a limit wouldn't exist. What are those four? Oscillation. Oscillation. This Unbounded talks about the endpoints. Unbounded behavior. Domain we're approaching infinity. Domain. domain restriction means there's no graph there. And then the fourth one. The limit on the left and the limit on the right don't equal each other. You always have to tell me, Adrian, why. You sit close. It's your fault. You're always going to have to tell me why the limit doesn't exist. Section two, there were six questions. You have to do all six. You absolutely have to do all six. Diego, I'm looking for your A number one best notation all the way from start to finish. Okay. Section three, there's two questions. You need to show all the work for that. You have until Monday at the start of class to get this done. If it is not done on Monday, what you're saying is you are satisfied with your grade and it will not change, not now, not ever. Anybody have any questions about that? Yeah. Um, progress reports and things like that were like delayed? Who delayed? even knows what's going on with progress reports right now? Okay. Um, what I do know is I have a plan and I'm going to work my plan. It's what I do. Work the plan. Um, so what I care about is your grade. I care about your safety and I want to make sure that we're all good. Okay. Still waiting for all the calculators to come out. Yes, sir. So like, um, Correct. So you're just going to do it and be in that fourth period. Okay, okay wrong, wrong class. Awkward. BC friends. Okay. Old and new. These are the grades right now. Okay. BC friends. Survivors. This is the quiz that you are going to start at 9.09. I know that was before. This is now. Work my plan, not your plan. All right. I think that's about that. So. Here's where we're moving. I've got 4, 8, 12, 16, 19, 22, 25. I know Karina is not here. Destiny. Des 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 oh, okay. Good. So that's all the friends. Here's where we're going. Today we're going to focus on asymptotes. You know a lot about asymptotes. There are lots of parent functions, Jesus, that we have studied that have asymptotes. What I want you to do is take the next three minutes find in that parent function survival guide all the functions you can find that have asymptotes. There's two flavors of asymptotes, Adrian. We've got the horizontal flavor and we've got the vertical flavor. I want all the ones you can possibly find. Go find them, son. Yes, the Is this an this one, 
Functions out of asymptotes out of the way. Chris, give me one. Give me one of the ones you found. You had three minutes. You guys were there. You were talking. You were identifying parent functions. This is an easy one. Give me one. Y equals 1 over x. If you're not sure what it looks like, maybe you want to take some paper and sketch it. 1 over x. Look -a like that. Look -a like that, right? Where are the asymptotes? Now here's the thing, I just heard zero, that means like nothing zero. to me. Asymptotes are lines. So y equals zero is a, what flavor? Horizontal. The vertical is x equals zero. Vertical asymptotes are always x equals number, horizontal asymptotes are always y equals number. That's one, give me more, any more hands? Paul. Y equals 1 over x squared. Paul, can you draw in the air what that looks like? Okay, y equals 1 over x squared. Look a like a, look -a like a that. Two asymptotes here. X equals 0, y equals 0. There are more. I need them. Jeanette. Y equals tangent of x. Y equals tangent of x. Now we're getting sexy. Okay, y equals tangent of x. How many asymptotes there, Jeanette? Uh, several. Several. <laughs> Does it just keep going? Doesn't it keep going? Yes. Okay, you do have an asymptote, and I need to see more people copying these down. You've got an asymptote over here at pi over 2. You've got an asymptote over here at x equals negative pi over 2. And they keep repeating. Right, because your function is periodic, repeats, repeats, repeats. There are more. There are some other obvious ones that you have to know. Marilyn. Anything in that parent function survival guide is on the have to know list. Hold on, Ibel. Natural, Natural log of x. Natural log of x has a, what kind of asymptote? Natural log of x, what kind of asymptote? Vertical. It's a vertical asymptote at X equals, zero. X equals zero. There are other ones. There's at least two more. Evel. Is, uh, is it y equals secant of x? Secant of x? Oh, yeah, secant. Yes, y equals secant of x has lots of vertical asymptotes. I'm not going to draw that one. Henry. Uh, y, is cotangent of x. y equals the cotangent of x is another one of these with lots and lots and lots of asymptotes. There are some other ones that I really care about that no one's gone anywhere near. Rebecca. Um, 
Oh, I like that. Daddy likes that. <laughs> 1 over x squared plus 1 <laughs> looks like that. What kind of asymptote? Horizontal. A horizontal asymptote at? At y equals 0. Horizontal asymptotes are always y equals. Vertical asymptotes are always x equals. You know. Uh, y equals e to the power of kx. Y equals e to the power of kx. Now, if k is positive, it's an increasing function, and the graph looks like that <laughs> with the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Is the graph of arc tangent of x in the survival guide? Uh, the arc, ta arc tangent, is it in the survival guide? Okay, my bad. It should be there, so if you could find a place to put it in. You're going to want to put a little star next to this. The graph of y equals arc tangent of x. Arc tan is the inverse of the tangent graph. Right? We've talked about inverses in algebra 1, and algebra 2, and in pre-calc. It's the inverse. The way that you build an inverse, though, you look at this, like the line y equals x, and you do a little reflection. These are things that you've studied in previous courses. The graph for arc tan, this is a really special one because this is rare. Look a like of that. It has two horizontal asymptotes. It has a horizontal asymptote up here at y equals pi over 2, and it has a horizontal asymptote down here at y equals negative pi over 2. It is the only parent function that you're responsible for knowing that has two different horizontal asymptotes. All the other ones have one horizontal asymptote, so this is a really good one to think about for some of the questions that are going to be coming up. And Aldo, you okay? Good. See, you didn't burst into flames. It was okay. Good. Yes? It's not a sideways X cubed. I don't really like that. I don't like that at all. It kind of has that shape, I gotcha. But the graph of y equals x cubed is continuous and doesn't have any asymptotes. This guy has two horizontal asymptotes. What it is, is a reflection over the line y equals x of the tangent of x graph. Okay, all the friends are mostly okay? Sheila, Marilyn. Does it keep on going? Does what keep on going? So think about it this way. The graph of tangent of x, it increases, gets closer, closer, closer. At, as you get closer to pi over 2, we're heading towards infinity. Same behavior over here, but reversed. As the x's approach infinity, the y values approach, but never get to pi over 2. It doesn't just increase forever. You increase and you flatten out. All the friends will say okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Time for a push then. Henry, what was that? The one that looks like that, but doesn't have an asymptote. The one that looks like this, but doesn't have asymptotes? Cube root of x. Cube root of x. Way to be there. Moana, thank you for all that you do. All right, so it's going to get technical now. We're going to get technical. You might want to borrow some colors from somebody else. I need some brave soul. Brave soul here to read from the college textbook the definition of asymptotes. Can I get some brave soul that would be able to read the first one? Paul, go for it, brave soul that you are. I'm on page 15 in the handout. As the x approaches infinity, or as the x approaches negative infinity, as the graph of y is as the x approaches the horizontal line, y is the then the line of y equals L is called a horizontal asymptote of the graph of x squared. Okay, keep going. In other words, the limit of x, the limit of x is x equals infinity equals L, or the limit of x of x is x equals negative infinity equals L, and the line y equals L is a horizontal asymptote of y equals L. Okay, this is our new formal working definition for horizontal asymptote. It has to deal with limits. So, Chris, what I want to do is I want to get like a diagram to go along with everything that's over here. So what Paul read is as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity. It means we're talking about the ends of the graph. As I head out towards the end, if the graph approaches 
approaches is not the same as saying getting there. You're approaching this horizontal line, then the line y equals l is called a horizontal asymptote. So here's where I want to start. Horizontal asymptote at y equals l. If this is a horizontal asymptote, Jackie, then what I'm saying is as I head out towards infinity, the y values get closer to l. So maybe in your head you're thinking, oh, you mean like that. Does that work? Is that an example of horizontal asymptote? Yeah. Absolutely. And the notation is going to be because the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l. Do we ever get to l? No. But we get close to l, and this is the important thing that you're taking down in your notes, right, Zach? Okay. But some folks might say, but wait, couldn't we be talking about this behavior? Couldn't that be the situation? Limit as x approaches infinity is equal to L. Does that work? Yes. Absolutely. But I also have to consider what happens as I approach negative infinity. So this is saying limit as x approaches negative infinity is equal to L. Or maybe the graph does this. Limit as x approaches infinity, negative infinity, sorry, is equal to L. If you have a horizontal asymptote, your graph looks something like that. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you on next week's quiz. Some of you aren't going to learn from that mistake, and I'm going to get you again on the test. Sad panda, if I had a heart, it would break. <laughs> Horizontal asymptotes are talking about end behavior. Do that with me, please. End behavior. There's no conversation being had about the middle of the graph. So when I say you have a horizontal asymptote, I'm saying look out here, look out here, I make no comment, no statement about what happens in the middle because what do we care about horizontal asymptotes? End behavior. Are we good? End behavior, Jesus. Alright, let's go with this. And Floor, can you read the next one? Brave soul that you are. Okay, let's get a picture to go along with this as well. So now we're talking about vertical asymptotes. Can you guys show me vertical asymptotes? Which way? Which way? Vertical asymptotes, we're going this way, right? Be really careful. Vertical asymptotes are always in x equals. Horizontal are always y equals. So what I'm saying is that there's this line here at x equals k. And to be a vertical asymptote, your graph does something like this. This is an example of the limit as x approaches k from which side? The left. The left. The left. And in this particular graph, this says the limit as x approaches k from the left of f of x is going to be... Be careful. Limit as x approaches k from the left of f of x is going to be positive infinity. Now, is this the only way that you can have a vertical asymptote? No. No, what else could happen? I could come in from the right hand side, right? If I saw that, I'd say, oh, that's a vertical asymptote. Limit as x approaches k from the right is positive infinity. Is that the only way the function could behave around a vertical asymptote? No. What else? What else could happen? Jeanette, what else could happen? It um, could come from the, the right and not touch. Yeah. I could be coming from the right and do what? And approach um, x equals 1. Uh, not x equals 1, so here's x the first k. What we want is we're decreasing. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an example of the limit as x approaches k from the right. And what we're getting is negative infinity. The other thing that could happen is the limit as x approaches k from the left is negative infinity. We've got now like the wordy textbook definition that we were able to read. 
and we've got the sketches and everything is beautiful and everybody's good? Okay, I want to get some hands on this. Can you tell me of a function that has this behavior around a vertical asymptote? I'm looking for an example of a parent function. Use your survival guide if you need to. Talk to somebody near you, you got five seconds. I'm looking for a parent function that has this behavior around one of its vertical asymptotes. I'm going to wait until there's like 15 hands up in the air. What parent function has this behavior? DC friends, you guys are going to want to start in that quiz in about one minute. Okay, you get 20 minutes for the multiple choice, 10 minutes for your response. Okay. All right, who's got it for me? What function, what function, what function, Julissa? 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared has this behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Are there any parent functions that have this behavior? This guy here and this guy here. Uh, Jackie? 1 over x. 1 over x would do that, right? Mm -hmm. Are there any parent functions that have this behavior? Mm -hmm. Look at where I'm pointing to. This behavior. Are there any parent functions that have this behavior? No. I'm doing that trick question thing. No. There are no parent functions that have this behavior, Jackie. Why? Because it's not a survival guide. Oh, okay. Now we're on it's not the parent function survival guide. There is another reason. Let me ask the question again. Are there any parent functions ever, anywhere, on any oh, piece of paper no. that have this behavior, Andy? No. Why not? Because it's a asymptote. Oh, so disappointing, so close. Oh, it was like a great movie with a crappy ending. Okay. <laughs> Are there any parent functions now or ever that have this behavior, these two things at the same time? No. Andy said no. And I love it. Why not? It doesn't pass the vertical line test. It doesn't pass, not vertical, as in with the vertical line test. The vertical line test is a way that we used to test functions. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. and it's like, no. <laughs> if you can draw a vertical line anywhere and it crosses the curve in more than one place, it's not a function. Okay? Henry, you good? Uh, yeah. Okay, you guys definitely need time to move. So here's what we're going to do. You need to find somebody. I see you, Jeanette. I'm just ignoring you. You need to find somebody that you are not currently sitting with to answer the next five questions, please. It's at the bottom of page 15 and the top of page 16. You've got three minutes, four minutes to answer all of those discussion questions. Three at the bottom of 15, two at the top of 16. Go, go, go. Leave the DC friends alone. Oh, my goodness. Question, discussion, question, question, question. Somebody that you're not sitting with, go talk to them. No pressure, Jackie, Jeanette, Daisy, Sheila, Marilyn. Smart, good looking ladies. That's how we roll at Southwest. I don't teach the uglies. Yeah. 
Paul, oh, thank you for reading the directions. These are not yes, no questions. These are yes, because, no, because questions. This is a it is one of the only functions that we're going to deal with that has possible to have. Minute and a half to look smart. Jeanette, you okay? You look like you're pulling your hair out on camera and everything. Hold on. If I'm going to be here, I need to suck in my gut. Oh, yes. So what I was, the question I was asking is, are there any parent functions that want both of these things out? You get me? There are parent functions that do this. There are parent functions that do this. This. There are no functions Oh, we need this one. This guy, they can Oh, you got it. Oh, no. I thought it was. Hey, Resist the temptation to sit on Gerson. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, question number one. Can Shut up! Oh, let me turn the camera out. I don't know who it was that said shut up. That sounded like Paul. Yeah, Paul. Paul. Who's deep, manly voice. Okay. Can a function have more than one vertical asymptote? Can a function have more than one vertical asymptote? Yes. 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 No, this should no. be a strong no. No. yes. Yeah. And you need to give me an example. The graph of y equals tangent. Y equals tangent of x is a great example. Lots and lots and lots of asymptotes. How many? An infinite number. It is possible to have more than one vertical asymptote. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, can a function have more than one horizontal asymptote? If so, sketch an example. Hey Zeus, what do you think? Can a function have more than one horizontal asymptote? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, I like you. Yes, sir. Give me an example. Y equals r tan. Thank you for paying attention. Okay, well, the graph of y equals r tan has an asymptote at y equals pi over 2, and it has an asymptote at y equals negative pi over 2. It looks like that, and I hope every single person in the room got this one. Mm -hmm. yes. Good. All right, Sylvia, can a function which is continuous on the interval negative infinity to infinity have a horizontal asymptote? Can you imagine a function that is continuous everywhere that has a horizontal asymptote? No. Okay, so no. How many guys agree with Sylvia that there are no continuous functions with horizontal asymptotes? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Where are the folks that disagree? You can think of some continuous functions that have asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. How many all have no idea? Be honest. Always be honest. Excellent. Adrian, so you said you can think of an example? Yeah. Give me an example. Uh, y equals x squared. Right? Uh, okay, hold on. Well, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the graph of y equals x squared. Let's go through the criteria. Is this function continuous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it have any horizontal asymptotes? Yeah. No. no. 
Horizontal asymptotes, friends. Where do we look for horizontal asymptotes? The ends. Are the ends getting closer to some number? Yes. They're not getting closer to any number. They're getting close. Infinity is not a number. So although Adrian's answer is right, his justification. Uh, yes, ma'am. Y equals e to the power of x. Y equals e to the x. Look alike. That. Is it continuous? Yes. Horizontal asymptote? Yes. Absolutely. Other ones. Y equals e to the x works. Adrian, redeem yourself here. Uh, Way to go. The arc, <laughs> that was light. Uh, arc tangent graph is continuous and has two horizontal asymptotes. Others, Rebecca, what you got? Dang, so good. One over x squared plus one works. Anything else? <laughs> I've heard arctan of x, 1 over x squared plus 1, e to the x. You get one? Uh, y equals e to the power of negative x. Way to be lazy, but you're correct. <laughs> y equals e to the negative x also works. Friends up front, we're good? I like having you up front. All right, question number four. Can a function which is continuous on the interval of negative infinity to infinity, have a vertical asymptote. I think a lot of you didn't get here yet. Take, take a minute, look at four and five. Huh? Oh, Diego, you think I'm going to lower my standards that far? I had a rough two weeks, not that rough. Oh, well, this one? Oh, really? <laughs> High expectations are good expectations. Yes? Correct. As the x values increase towards infinity, the y values increase towards infinity. <laughs> to be a horizontal asymptote, the y values have to approach a number. And pi over 2, negative 6. All right, when I say calculus, you say ready, calculus. That's the weakest thing I've ever heard ever. When I say calculus, you say ready, calculus. Ready, calculus. Well done. Okay, can a function which is continuous on the interval negative infinity to infinity have a vertical asymptote? How many of you would say yes, a continuous function can have a vertical asymptote? There's one, there's two, there's three, and they are way smart people. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, look at all of you guys jumping off the cliff together. It is not possible for a continuous function to have a vertical asymptote. Why? Why? Why will a continuous function, Henry, never have a vertical asymptote? Because vertical is like saying it's going to stop at like curve at one point, but then like you have it continuous and like keep going and not stop. Even easier than that. What do we know about continuous functions? Continuous functions. Continuous functions. For a function to be continuous, there can be no 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 jumps, no breaks, no vertical asymptotes. If you have a vertical asymptote somewhere, I don't know where, here, could you ever? Go all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity no. with a continuous function. No. At best, you might say, well, I could do this, and then I could do that, but that's not continuous, so that's a no. And now here's the tricky one. Number five, can a function ever intersect? Intersect, another way to say intersect? Cross. Can a function cross its horizontal asymptote? The answer is yes, it can. What? You have no parent functions that you're pulling down right now that do this. But when I when we talk about horizontal asymptotes, what, what part are we talking about? The ends. So if I said you have a function that has a horizontal asymptote, say, say here, here's the line y equals l, then what it means is you're expecting 
something like that, or maybe even something like that to happen on the ends. I want to emphasize the ends piece. Are we okay with the ends? Mm -hmm. But is it possible that the graph does that? Yes. Yeah. It's possible. You may not have a name for this function, Chris. You may not have ever seen it on your calculator before, but can we envision a graph that looks like this? And it's, and it's okay? Yeah. All right, good, drop the mic, I'm done. Yeah. Or drop the red marker. All right, cool, so let's switch gears here. Yes, ma'am? How do you know it's a number, but not um, that's a really good question. I'll get to that one later. Okay? Good question, Andy. All right, so here's what I want to do. I want to look at asymptotes on the calculator. So on your calculator, please, I want you to graph the function 5x minus 10 over x squared minus 4, and I want you to use your calculator skills to tell me about horizontal and vertical asymptotes here. Show me what you can do. We'll talk in a bit. Okay. DC friends, we doing okay? something that looks like this. Okay, yeah. so here's my first question. Looking at this graph, are we convinced that we have some asymptotes happening here? Yeah. Okay, do we have a horizontal asymptote? Yes. Yeah. Do we have vertical asymptotes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, where's the horizontal asymptote? Uh, horizontal asymptote, I'm looking at the ends, and it looks like we're getting closer to the line y equals zero. Hopefully that's the easy one with the graph in front of you. Did any of you do like the trace feature and plug in values and head off towards infinity and see what happens with the y values? Nobody did that? Okay. Bummer. Vertical asymptote. Do we have one? Henry? Uh, y equals 2. Y equals 2. Now I want to be careful. I don't like what you said. I asked for vertical and you said y equals. I mean, y x. equals is horizontal. X equals. x equals 2. Yeah. X equals 2 would have to be a vertical line to the right of the y axis. I think what you mean is x equals negative 2. Did anybody else find it as x equals negative 2? Okay, how? Sounds like some people went to the table. Did anybody count the little tick marks on the x axis and say it kind of looks like it's over here at x equals negative 2? Some folks did that. Maybe you did a little trace thing. So here's the thing though. The graph is good, but it doesn't tell the whole story. What I want to do is I actually want to do this with limits, and this is going to shake your confidence a little bit. 
I just want to tell you right now, it's going to shake your confidence. <laughs> Jackie's like, I have none. How could you shake it? I don't even have it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at 5x minus 10 over x squared minus 4. And I want to start by looking at vertical asymptotes. And this is something you would have done a little bit in pre-calc, but not a lot. How do we start the search for a vertical asymptote? If Mr. Link last year said, hey, y'all, does this function have a vertical asymptote, what would you have done last year, Paul? Mm -hmm. Equal what to zero? The whole function set the function equal to zero? If you set the whole function equal to zero, that's how you X. find roots. Not that, not that you set x equal to zero. You set the denominator. You look to see where is x squared minus 4 equals zero. Because what happens if I'm dividing by zero? You can't divide by zero. This is what causes asymptotes to occur. So x squared minus 4 is equal to zero. That's the denominator. Where does x squared minus 4 equal zero? I heard two. I heard negative two. Isn't it both? Right? If you solve by factoring, you're going to say, oh, x equals negative two or x equals positive two. Here's the problem. If all you remember from pre-calc, and maybe you didn't even remember this right now, is that the way we go when we find vertical asymptotes is we set the denominator equal to zero and solve it, you're going to tell me that there are two. What does your calculator know? There's one. There's one. So one of these is actually a vertical asymptote. The other one is a lie. The other one is different. And so here's what we do. Why don't you plug it in? Well, it's not that you plug it in. Asymptotes have to do with limits. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 2 of 5x minus 10 over x squared minus 4. If this is a big if. If you have a vertical asymptote, then what I would expect is that the answer is going to be infinity or negative infinity. I'm increasing without bound or I'm decreasing without bound. That would make the vertical asymptote behavior that I want. Friends over here, are we okay? Well, let's try this. I need to find the limit as x approaches 2. The first thing you probably want to do plug is plug in. Let's do it. 10 minus 10 over 4 minus 4. Oh, that's 0 over 0. Not disgusting, the indeterminate form. So I need something. How am I going to figure out the real limit here? Oh. Henry, what are you going to do? You, uh, you factor out, right? Let's try to factor and cancel. 5x minus 10, I can factor out of 5. x squared minus 4, I can factor as x minus 2 times x plus 2. Hopefully the algebra skills are okay here. And now what happens? The x minus 2's cancel out. What's the limit as x approaches 2 of 5 over x plus 2? 5 over 4. It's 5 over 4. In order for the graph to have a vertical asymptote, our definition of a vertical asymptote is that the limit has to be one of two things. Infinity or negative infinity. Did either of those things just happen? No. no. So this isn't a vertical asymptote. Because this isn't one of the infinities. What this says is that on your graph, if you were to get closer, closer, closer to where x equals 2, what's happening is that your y values are getting closer to 5 over 4. You can never be equal to 2, because that would mean I'm dividing by 0 in the denominator. I don't want to do that. What you have is you have a whole, or even fancier, a removable discontinuity. Okay? The fact that x equals 2 causes the denominator to be equal to 0 is a problem, but it doesn't mean asymptote. This guy here is a removable discontinuity. Okay, what questions are out there? There have to be questions, I'm sure about this. So in the graph, in the calculator, when you pull up the, the table? If you go to the table. It's undefined at Correct. At x equals 2, the graph is undefined. That's why it's a whole. There's no point there. 
but you can't see it with your eyes on the graph. Let's go. Um, to find a horizontal asymptote, you do a numerator instead of the No, that's different. Okay, let's keep going. So we've figured out what's happening at x equals 2. We need to look at what happens at x equals negative 2. Henry, stay with me. Okay, limit as x approaches negative 2 of 5x minus 10 over x squared minus 4. I'm always going to go back. I'm going to check both. Let's try that plug-in approach that you guys like so much. You get negative 10 minus 10 over 4 minus 4, which is negative 20 over 0. The numerator gets closer to negative 20. The bottom gets closer to 0. Take 20, negative 20, divide it by numbers that get close to 0. They're getting big, or they're getting really small, like big like infinity, or small like negative infinity. This is either approaching positive or negative infinity. This means I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, and isn't that exactly what we knew from the graph? Right? You can see the vertical asymptote from the graph. You cannot see the whole from the graph. But the way that we're going to do this, and you guys are going to get some homework this weekend to get some practice, you're going to set the denominator equal to 0. You're going to evaluate the limit. If the limit is a number, you have a hole in the graph. If the limit gives you something like number over 0, which is one of the infinities, you have a vertical asymptote. Done. Done with vertical asymptotes. Friends are OK? OK. Julissa, are you OK? You look like you were going to hang yourself with your hair. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Let's look at the horizontal asymptote. How do we find horizontal asymptotes? Go back, check your notes. How do you find horizontal asymptotes? Check your notes. How do we find those horizontal asymptotes? Gonzalo knows. Gonzalo knows. Gonzalo knows. Only Gonzalo seems to know. He's not going to tell you anything. <laughs> he wants to take you down. He wants a higher grade than you do. He won't help. Go back to the definition of horizontal asymptotes. Go back to those definitions. Henry's ready. Henry's always ready. To figure out the vertical asymptote in the hole. Go back to that definition of horizontal asymptote. Gonzalo, I'm getting bored. How do we find horizontal asymptotes? Oh, you cheater. I want to have a limit conversation. We're talking about asymptotes in terms of limits. Go back to those notes. How do we find horizontal asymptotes, Paul? Uh, oh. <laughs> Horizontal asymptote per se, help me out here. We're talking about the limit as x approaches infinity. Because horizontal asymptotes, the ends, the end behavior, what happens as I approach infinity? What happens as I approach negative infinity? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Go for it. Uh, don't you, you divide the first numbers? Okay, some people are remembering the rule. There was a rule from pre-calculus about how you quickly find these. And the rule had something to do with, you look at the degrees. Degree 1 in the numerator, degree 2 in the denominator. Which one's bigger? The denominator, so the denominator goes faster. And so what's the limit going to be? Zero. And so you'd say, ah, oh, that means horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Just saying zero is not your answer. Okay? I want to show you another way. Because maybe you didn't remember. Maybe what you do is you want to plug in. And you let x approach infinity. Five times something getting close to infinity. X gets big. Five times big? Bigger. Bigger. <laughs> Minus 10. That's still big. The denominator, big squared, minus 4, that's way big. Infinity over infinity, 
not zero. One. Not one. It's another indeterminate form. It's the second indeterminate form. Which means we need something clever. And here's the clever thing. And we've only got one minute, so I'm going to go a little fast here. Okay. Some of you are like, you've been going fast all along. Limit as x approaches infinity, you're not going to see this one coming. I'm going to multiply by fancy one. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over x squared. First of all, is that legal? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? It's why one. is it? It's 1. This is fancy 1. And you might think, but why? Why would you do that? Check it out. Limit as x approaches infinity. 5x minus 10 times 1 over x squared is 5x over x squared minus 10 over x squared. In the denominator, x squared over x squared minus 4 over x squared. We're going to pick up from here on Monday, so don't worry too much. Here's what's going to happen. The x up here and one of those cancel out. The x squared here and here cancels out and you get 1. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of 5 divided by x? 5 divided by big. 5 divided by really big number gets close to 0. 10 divided by big squared? 0. 1. 4 divided by big squared? 0. In the top you get 0, in the bottom you get 1, that's 0. So that means you've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, tonight's homework, I'm going to email you as soon as class is over, and it's going to have the solutions. Isn't that pretty? How did I know to multiply by 1 over x squared? That's a great conversation for us to continue with on Monday.